Hello and welcome to Dragon Boat Dynasty, a podcast where I share my experience in building, coaching and scaling a Dragon Boat team. My name is Sean and I'm the head coach of Argonaga Dragon Boat team with over 100 active members based in Malaysia. So this is just a little bit of an introduction of what this entire um, podcast series is about. It's not so much as a place where people, I guess you can gain some knowledge from it. It's a place where I share my experiences, my learnings, where I failed and where I succeeded in certain things. It is also a place where I kind of keep a diary, a journal, if I may, of my coaching experiences. So just a quick one. As of 2023, I have been in Agonaga Dragon Boat team for six years, two of which as an assistant coach to the founder and captain of the team. And four years after that as the head coach of the team. And how I picked up this sport was that in 2012, I actually went for this kayaking expedition in Penang. It was a three-day round island kayaking expedition. It was the first time I would, I guess it was also the last time I did that three-day round island expedition. It was quite grueling, to be honest. So anyway, before we cast off, I actually saw a dragon boat paddling near the shore. And from that point onwards, I kind of felt this this sense of awe and amazement at, at how they were able to achieve perfect synchronicity, perfect control of the boat as a unit. They can turn, they can shorten their strokes, they can lengthen their strokes, and everybody does everything at the same time. And as a person who has been in individual sports for the past 10 years, at that point, right, I spent like 10 years sport climbing, and I guess six out of them were competitive. And I spent two to three years doing CrossFit and two years after that in mixed martial arts. And of all the sports, in all the sports that I did, most of them were mostly, well, I guess were very, very individual sports. And competing in these sports felt quite lonely, to be honest. When I was competing in climbing, my closest reference and my closest friend was actually my greatest competitor. <clears throat> he wasn't actually a very good reference to begin with because he was almost, he was like six foot tall and I'm like five and a half or so. So if you know climbing, you know that when your height is different, you can't use that person as a reference or you can't use that person as a, I guess, as a training partner because height makes a lot of difference in climbing. I've always wanted to try team sport and, you know, the kind of thing, the kind of sport where we, we rely on each other to strategically think things through, move things forward and... I guess, get things done as a greater collective rather than an individual who feels very lonely. Then, in 2017, I was asked to try out for a Dragon Boat team. I'm not going to lie. Even before I went for the tryout, I kind of knew I was going to join a team. And I was glad uh, that a few close friends decided to tag along. So began my journey in this sport. Running this team is... Wow. Well, running this team is more complex than I thought it would be. It's like running a company. It's like running a government. I always tell my teammates that running a team is like running a government because regardless of what decision you make, regardless of what choice you make, you can't please everyone. There will always be people critically against your decision, even if you are making that decision for the greater good. And it's, it's tough. You have to be... I guess sometimes the bad person knowing that you are doing this for the team and not, you know, to make a few people happy. It's not like a company because nobody actually gets paid and so the motivation to stay and contribute has to come from somewhere else. So we have to understand how people operate, who they are, what motivates them and then, you know, I guess if I were to say it in a very crude way, dangle the, the right carrot in front of the right person, so that person will stay on and contribute to the team. We constantly ask questions like, you know, um, how do we get members to take up leadership roles? Because um, we don't want to continuously do all this work. And putting people in all kinds of leadership roles sets the team up for scalability, sustainability, and legacy. That's what we've always been wanting to build because we know for sure that we won't stay long, we won't stay forever, we will grow old and we will reach a point where we can no longer pedal. So how else do we ensure that the team can move forward and it grow to be a better entity than the one that we set out to build initially and we left? 
How do we encourage the team to get better, stronger and healthier? A lot of people come in thinking that it was a, it's a social place. You know, you come, you hang out and then you just pedal a few rounds. And it, initially it was like that. And eventually we had to transform the team and the mindset of the team and the people in the team from that social gathering place to a proper sports team because in, we need to be competitive. We need to stay competitive in order to continue to retain our best paddlers. And if you're not competitive, they don't see the point of staying and they'll leave. So that, that was very important as well. How do we change people's mindset from putting the, themselves first to putting the team first? Being Malaysians, especially urban Malaysians, most of us are educated in a very Western way. Not, not that it's a bad thing. I mean, I'm, I'm as individualistic as it, as it comes, right? I'm, I'm like the, the perfect cookie cutter, most individualistic, most freedom-centric person you can ever meet most rebellious one as well. But to build the team, we have to change the mindset of people from putting themselves first to putting the team first. The question we always ask, we always tell them to ask themselves is, ask not what the team can do for you, ask what you can do for the team. And that was one of the toughest challenges. And it's a challenge that we are still, I guess, somewhat struggling with. So in this podcast series, I share experiments we did with the team, all kinds of experiments. We tested them out and we figured out why they worked and why they did not work and which one we kept and which one we removed. And um, we also, I also shared outcomes and um, you know, all kinds of um, things that happened from it. Um, especially my mistakes and learnings that I made along the way. I mean, I've, I've, I wasn't built to be a coach, right? I mean, who wakes up one morning and says and tells themselves that I want to be a coach because I'm damn good at it? No, I I mean I'm not that person, and I had to learn along the way. And I had um, I guess I had my teammates to thank for being patient with me and giving me all the opportunities to be better, so so that I can be a better coach and a better human being and and give them better platform to be better versions of themselves and build the team to a better version of itself. And ultimately, how we also position the team for scale, succession, and the growth of the sport as well. We, all, we started off not, think, not seeing the team itself as an NLB all. We, you, we wanted, we've always wanted to use the team as a platform to grow the sport itself. The sport has seen a lot of growth in the past five to six years. I, I can say that we contribute to it, but I can't say that we, we have a hand in you know crafting a, or, or molding the entire thing. We were just one of the teams that contributed to the, the fame and introduction of the sport to both corporate and fun-loving people, activities, you know, giving people activities, exposing them to what Dragon Boat is. Very educational stuff. But eventually, we've always wanted to, to grow beyond that as well, to, you know, have more of an academy thing. But yeah, that's that's besides the point. So in essence, this podcast series is about my journey as a dragon boater, as a paddler, as a steerer, as a coach, and as an operator of one of the largest dragon boat team in Malaysia and perhaps even Southeast Asia. So yeah, if you're interested, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.